Kula behind them, sorry. Alexic dives in there. Kevin's gonna dive in there. Shock is going low. Shock's a dead man. <laughs> yeah! It's three down. That's gonna be four down. And Copenhagen won. Shove it straight down the mid lane. Oh. And there is the finisher. Roger takes it a triple. Oh, we have that. Yeah. Yeah. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to week 5 of the League of Legends Championship Series coming to you live from our studio in Cologne, Germany. I'm Joe Millet along with Trevor Quickshot Henry and what better way to say Happy Valentine's Day to all of you than with a super-sized day of action. Yeah, who needs flowers when you've got four LCS matches and a Challenger Series final? And with the standing so close, I'm expecting to see anything but love on the Rift today. It will be love here in the Casades, though, let me promise you that. Let's break down some of yesterday's highlights, though. And the first up, I have to say, Fnatic lost again. Now four games without a win. Yeah, they, they're completely unable to break that losing streak. Last week, Fnatic had a very weak early game. That's what cost them during week, three, uh, week four. In yesterday's match, they improved their early game, but their mid-game decision-making wasn't there. And it yeah. forced them to get caught up repeatedly by SK Gaming, and SK picked up the win. And while we're talking about teams not doing very well, Millennium are currently rooted right at the foot of the table. Yeah, Millennium continue to struggle. Their brief hiatus to IEM did secure them some wins, but it didn't offer much in the way of LCS stability. So what they need to do is go back to the basics, stepping it up now because we're almost halfway through the split. But on the positive side of things, Rockout bounced back from behind to beat Alliance and stay top of the league. Yeah, and Rocket are definitely the surprise performers of the spring, spring split. After five weeks of games, seeing how consistently well they're playing and how well they're performing, then there is no one that can doubt how, tr how they are really the arguably strongest team, if not one of the strongest teams in Europe right now. And the European Challenger Series saw Meet Your Makers take down Tick, Trick and Duck to take third place yesterday. Yeah, MYM just outplayed TTD. Uh, Charu played Yasuo and Karthus. He had very good performances on both of those champions. And it was good to see MYM playing and performing well together as a team. They secured their third place title and they grabbed themselves five Challenger Circuit points. And of course, there were some plays that had you guys buzzing on Twitter, but one LCS big play ruled them all yesterday. And it happened during the Rockout versus Alliance game. Yeah, this one comes to us from at Saber Wolf. He says, despite dying, Tabs goes man mode and secures two kills in a hopeless situation, which saved it being a clean ace. Let's actually see it in action. Then there's going to be Alliance in trouble. They're caught out in the bush. Look at the side here. That's going to be Nif locking him down. It is going to be one kill for Tabs. Can he get a second advantage? Yes, he can. It will be the death of him. Oh, will it? He's on towards him. Yankos, Yankos locks on towards him. Drunken doing what he can to keep him at bay. I don't believe the wall comes in. Such great play from Tabs. Stayed alive a lot longer than I was expecting him to in that situation. And for you guys at home, remember to tweet us at LOL Esports and tell us your favorite plays throughout the day using that hashtag LCS Big Plays. Now, let's check out the standings to see where the teams are before we get today's game, uh, games underway. At the top of the table, again, it's a tie, just as we like it here in Europe. Gambit and Rockout, both with eight wins, three losses, and then we have Fnatic just behind them at seven for four. And in fourth place, it is SK Gaming and the Super Hot Crew. They are tied at five wins and six losses, and yet another tie. This time it's <laughs> sixth, as Alliance and the Copenhagen Wolves share four and seven records, and sitting in last place for yet another day is Millennium, rounding out the table at three and eight. But it is a whole new day in the LCS, and that means anything can happen. So here's today's lineup of games. First up, it's the Alliance taking on Super Hot Crew, and then Fnatic look to get back to winning ways against Millennium. And after that, it is the Copenhagen Wolves as they try to tackle Rocket, and then SK Gaming takes on Gambit. And immediately after those games conclude, we'll be bringing you a special event right here on our stage. The top teams in the European Challenger scene will be facing off in a best of three when Ninjas in Pajamas take on Cloud9 Eclipse to decide who will take first place in the European Challenger Series final. Yeah, that begins right after the LCS games, and Joe and I will be calling all of the action in that best of three. And as always, for more information about both the Challenger Series and the LCS, head over to lolesports.com for all the schedule information, player stats, VODs, and much more. 
and that's where you can also vote on today's matches. Just click on the thumb next to the team you think will win in each matchup, and we will tally up those votes before each game. Yeah, and just as a reminder, click the tickets link at the top of the page to find out how you can be part of the studio audience here to cheer on your favorite teams. Now it's your turn to share your thoughts with us. So hop on Twitter and tell us which European LCS pros play style do you love the most and why? Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with Overpower. I love watching the way he plays. He has a lot of different champions. He plays them aggressively, but he plays them intelligently aggressively. So making the right decisions. For you guys at home, write to us at LOL Esports and use that hashtag LCS. And in honor of today's holiday, we'll be giving away the brand new Heartseeker Ash skin to lucky viewers who have had their tweets aired on our broadcast today. Yeah, not only that, but each winner will receive two codes so you can share them with a special summoner in your life. I'd share mine with you, Trevor, if I even had one. But for now, let's send it over to Shox, who's standing by with X Peke and Reckless from Fnatic. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm If Your Shock Supporter, joined here by two members of Fnatic, X Peke and Reckles. Thank you very much and welcome to the table. Now, we're going to start by talking about your guys' performance yesterday versus SK Gaming. Peke, what do you think went wrong? Uh, pretty much the decision making and some individual plays as well. I did a couple of mistakes by myself. Uh, and besides that, I think more, more than individual mistakes, I think it came when we all moved together as a team. We had no coordination, oral calls were bad. When, when we say let's do this, we do it, but we are super slow. And meanwhile, they take a turret and we get a kill for it. So it's not worth. Normally, when you get a kill, you should get objectives, not the other way around. Yeah, uh, Reckles, you went 7 2 and 0 again. That's a great score. Where did it go wrong from your perspective? Well, Peke was also 6 and 2 that game. Uh, and with having two carries fed, you should usually win the game. But the main problem was not actually how strong we were individually, rather how we played it as a team. Because no matter how fed you are, if you don't play it perfectly as a team and you uh, perform very badly in team fights, it won't matter at all. So it, that was the main problem in that game. All right, so tell me then, how much of that do you think is team synergy and how much of that is related to the picks you guys have been going for? Um, I could say the picks, the picks could be better for sure, but I think if we play like we normally do, a lot better, the picks wouldn't have mattered. The, in other games maybe, but last game at least, the pick was fine, but we just didn't play them right. Like there were some fights, we could have done a lot better, but no one really call it, the, no one did the right call. And we just took bad fights, the, the only fight we did on and we were really behind and we won it was on Midland when we were like, let's just engage. We have a good setup for it and it went equal, but we were super behind. Then on top lane, uh, again, we were 10k behind and we managed to almost win the fight. But we should have done that since the beginning, be more confident in ourselves and play the setup better. And I think also um, the rotations in this game was very bad from our side and caused the fights to be very more like valuable. So the fact that we did poorly in the fights uh, and poor rotations kind of snowball the game faster than it would be if our rotations was, b was better. Yeah, that's something you guys were doing so well in the beginning of the season, which makes me wonder, is there something specific that changed? It's not like you, you changed the member or anything. So from that Gambit loss on, what changed? Well, the first games, yeah, we did try the playing the double AP a bit. I think the first games, it was not fully that, but it could... The, the first two games, Gragas and LeBlanc game, I think... No, the Gragas game was because of it, or setup was not that good. Then the LeBlanc game, it was not the picks, it was mostly the, the decision of camping top lane and not getting anything on LeBlanc. Let's say LeBlanc got one kill, I think it would have been totally fine, and people would have said that LeBlanc is OP on top, but she didn't get the kill and it was super bad. Then the games after that, I think we started to make wrong decisions all the time after mid-game, and yeah. But uh, also, this problem is not only on Soas, it's on the whole team. So him picking AP is not only on him, it's also our team decision. So there is no uh, flaws in his decision, it's more a team decision. Okay, um, tell me a little bit more about that team synergy and for you, because you were telling before the interview, I have this immense hunger to do good because I've been waiting for this for a year. Is that kind of ruining your plans now that it's not super? Well, I, I can say like for sure I'm more hungry than others, perhaps in the team, because they've been around for a longer time than me, and I actually waited one year to be here. Um, but at the same time, I'm making them more hungry, uh, and I think that's good. Uh, we're mashing good together, and even if we have a four losing streak here, I think we'll come back strong in the end of the split. 
So you guys have a chance to break that losing streak later versus Millennium. How high are your chances to win that, you think, Piqué? I think we have really, really, really high chances because we, we have lost so many games that just by random chance we have to win one now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, th I think we are going to do good now. We are really focused on it. We talk a lot about it. And I think we are going to think a lot more during the game. In the last games, we were thinking, but we were not really making the right choices. And now I think we're going to be really careful when we think what we want to do exactly and use our brains. That's what we really need to do. All right, well, good luck in that. Finally, can I get your predictions on the first match of the day here? Alliance, as they take on the super hot crew. Michael. Uh, I'm calling it for Alliance. They had a really good showing yesterday uh, against Rocket. And I believe if they keep on going on that line, they can be a stronger team in the end as well. Okay. I think Super Hot Crew can do something good. They, they did really good versus Gambit, and they impressed me how, how they play. I think Gambit didn't think they would be that tough, and they play pretty much like any other top team. So I think even Super Hot Crew has a chance. All right, thank you guys very much, and of course, good luck later versus Millennium. We need to take a brief break, but when we return, the struggling alliance will face a surging Super Hot Crew who bested the Copenhagen Wolves yesterday. We'll be right back.